Good evening and thank you for letting me come along to tell you this evening about how I discovered Sashko and to show you some of my Japanese inspired quilts and other work. Um, as Pauline said, I've never done a Zoom presentation before, but they say it's never, you're never too old to learn, so here's hoping all goes well. So say, my name is Lorraine McCafferty and I'm a member of Balerno SWI, which is on the outskirts of Edinburgh. I've only been a member for a short period of time um, and I do know a couple of the members. However, I've yet to meet all of the ladies in person. Mm -hmm. So far, they've only appeared as little icons on a Zoom screen. Yeah. I live in Edinburgh with my very understanding husband of 40 years, mm -hmm. whose fingers are often to be seen holding up the quilts when I'm photographing them. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and he is also very understanding of the piles of fabric that appear around the house, along with the, the threads that um, are always on the carpets. Anyway, much to the dismay of my mother, who was a tailoress, and my grandmother, who was a dressmaker and embroiderer, I had no interest whatsoever in needlework until I was about 35 years old, when I visited a historic house and saw a most beautiful patchwork quilt on a bed and thought, that's what I want to learn to do. Mm -hmm. I've been doing patchwork and quilting for a number of years now, and I particularly enjoy hand quilting. And as Pauline said, this is how I got to you this evening, through sending in a photograph. It's one of those things that I, I, when I joined the SWI, I thought I want to get more involved in things. Um, this was maybe slightly different than I expected. <laughs> anyway, can we do the first slide, please, Pauline? Sure, sure, sure. Mm. So the next one down. Yeah. Next one, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this is my quilt, and which is also the quilt that's actually behind me. Um, and it contains a number of different techniques which I have called Japanese inspired. It, call, it uses sashko, a variety of Japanese fabrics, both large and small piece, scrap pieces to make up the blocks. There is some decorative borrow, machine quilt piecing and hand quilting. But what is a Japanese inspired quilt? I guess different people will have a different interpretation, but for me, it's a mixture of things. It's a fusion of East and West, highlighting the clear and uncluttered approach associated with Japanese design. It could be using Japanese materials or panels, creating Japanese blocks using regular quilting fabrics, mixing pieced blocks and sashko blocks, as you can see in this, this particular quilt, using borrow or, or using borrow as a decorative art. However, for me, Japanese work is all about precision. It's very careful piecing with regular stitching in both hand and in the machine work. There's not a huge difference between Japanese and Western quilting, but in Japanese work, there is a very big um, focus on hand work. From a practical standpoint, many quilters in Japan may simply not have the room to set up a table space needed to machine quilt at home. Similarly, long arm quilting certainly hasn't taken off in Japan, presumably for the same reasons. However, there are a lot of similarities in the patterns that we use for piecing. And all quilters around the world are thrifty and the Japanese are no different. This need for thrifty is reflected in Japanese quilting, where it is relatively, relatively rare to find a quilt that hasn't been made from scraps and or many other different small pieces of fabric. Even the more traditional Japanese style of quilts that use indigo, indigo fabrics will include a range of different shades and textures within the quilt. At this point, I must say that my husband tells me I must have a lot of Japanese blood in my body, or maybe it's just because I'm a hoarder, since even the smallest scraps of fabric are dropped into the scrap bag. You just never know when you're going to need that. Mm -hmm. However, it's really the sashko aspect of this work that has caught my imagination. In 2017, while at a quilt show at Ingolston, I took a one hour taster class about sashko with no real expectation about what it was, 
all I knew it was something to do with sewing. And my friend and I are always up for something new. We don't always like what we've tried, but we like to have a go. So next slide. Mm -hmm. Sashko. It, I'm saying Sashko because a lot of people pronounce it Sashiko, but the I is actually barely pronounced. It's a form of Japanese embroidery where intricate, typically geometric designs are used a run, using a running stitch, commonly using white stitches on indigo fabric. Very quickly, I was hooked and I wanted to learn more. And the following year, I signed up for an eight month course with Susan Briscoe, who is a designer, author, and teacher of Sashko, Boro, and other Japanese textile arts. I mentioned Sashko and Boro, but what's the difference between them? Sashko is the hand sewing technique that originated in ancient Japan, primarily sewn by women, and was often done by and for people who were too poor to buy new cloth. It was a practical technique for making cloth thicker, warmer, and more durable. The white stitches on a dark background are meant to represent snow on the, the ground in the dark, cold winter months, when sashiko stitching was the main indoor activity for Japanese women in rural Northern Japan. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Sashko was probably developed sometime during the 16 to the 1800s and by the late 19th and 20th century, as well as, uh, as it was a well-established technique, being skilled in Sashko was essential for a young girl wanting to make a good marriage. With a successful marriage at stake, a stitcher would strive to make her Sashko better than anyone else's. Young girls and women attended village needlework schools during the winter where Sashko designs were passed down from hand to hand. Very few were actually written or drawn out. No Sashko was ever done solely for decorative purposes. Regardless of what the Sashko style, the garments were never made for sale. Secondhand clothing was considered to be an option, so the wearer often reflected the, with pride of the stitcher. Usually someone within the family would be doing the stitching. In Japanese, the word sashko means little stabs, a reference to the plain running stitch, the size of a grain of rice that makes up sashko's beautiful geometric all over patterns that you can use to de decorate anything from pillowcases to bags to clothing. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Boro, on the other hand, are a class of Japanese textiles that have been mended or patched together. Mm -hmm. The term is derived from the Japanese word boroboro, meaning something tattered or repaired. When a kimono or a sleeping futon cover started to run thin in a certain area or clothing was torn, a family's woman, a woman's factor, a family um, would patch it with small pieces of scrap fabric using sashko stitching. To give you an example, a farmer wears a jacket every day. When the hole, when holes or tears appear in it, his wife mends the jacket with hand stitching, sashko. They had to repair it with fabric that they kept from the past because they didn't have enough money or assets to purchase the new fabric. And the man's wife kept repeating this mending process throughout his and the jacket's entire life. At this time in history, the Japanese weren't particularly proud of this type of work. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And the result of this repetition became a borrow jacket. Nowadays, old or vintage borrow jackets are highly sought after as art pieces. This jacket here can be seen in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and is over 100 years old. In contrast to Japan's gorgeous silk fabrics, sashko and boro are considered folk textile because it was produced and used by the peasant classes. Today, however, it is very much an art form. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Unlike my first attempt at boro, 
um, I tried, oops, oh, I, I tried to do something fancy. I used scrap pieces of tartan alongside other fabrics. And as you can see, it really didn't work. But I have kept that piece just as a practice piece. Um, and you can see I do lots of different types of stitching and practice on it. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's just to remind me that in future, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So what materials and tools do you need when you're doing Sashko? It's very easy to start. You only need a few basic items to do this technique. So it's, it's great for beginners at hand stitching, for them to learn and for to pick up. Mm -hmm. The next slide. Yes. Sashko thread is soft, strong, and a matte cotton. It comprised of multiple strands of cotton tightly woven together to form a single strand. And it has a slightly woolly look. It's traditionally white or sometimes cream. As Sashko becomes more popular and to cater for more modern tastes and designs, today there are a wide variety of colours and weights of thread for the different projects and the look that you want to end up with. The more modern designs are looking for more modern bright colours, as you could see in the small round ones there on the left hand side, sort of hot pinks and lime greens and, and bright oranges. Mm -hmm. uh, the white one in the middle is the traditional skein. Um, and that's quite a long one. And when you, you cut a skein, you actually plait it after you've cut it. Um, and that helps you pull out your threads much easier. Mm. I have also noticed that some of the, the smaller um, skeins can be wound around a close peg. So you don't actually cut your thread, you just keep sewing it from the, from the close peg. Mm. Tashko is, a tradition, is traditionally stitched using double thread. But again, to give it a lighter, more modern feel, single thread is now often used. But if you're just starting off and you don't have Sashko thread, you could use a number 16 pearl cotton, crochet cotton, or even embroidery thread. But I must say that's my least favorite as these threads tend to separate, which can look a bit messy over time. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Sashko needles, um, are various sizes and they have a large enough eye for the heavier threads to be put through. They are very sharp, they are thick and they are rigid. They come in different lengths and I found that the long ones are great for doing lots of straight lines and the shorter ones for designs that have curves or circles. They are very different from hand quilting needles which are very small and very fine. Um, and they're also much longer than regular hand embroidery needles. With the really large, uh, long one, it sometimes feels as if you're quilting or, or sewing with a telegraph pole rather than a needle. Again, if you don't have a sashko needle, hand embroidery with a large eye can work as a substitute. The needles that you see on the screen, as well as being um, different sizes, are of different quality. So the ones in the center are clover needles. They're slightly cheaper. They're perfectly good, but they are slightly cheaper. The, the more expensive ones are the ones in the test tube. Um, and these go through fabric just beautifully. They're, they're really a, a treat to work with, the tulip needles. Mm -hmm. Next slide. What are, the, what are, those, um, are those to help you push the needle through, the, the, the things at the bottom? Oh, sorry. Yes, these are these are thimbles. Yeah. Um, again, they are slightly different to um, a regular thimble. These actually sit on the middle finger at the base of your finger. Yeah. So you don't actually use them at the tops where you use a, a regular thimble. Mm -hmm. um, and they are to, to help push through because when you're stitching, you tend not to just take one or two stitches. You could take anything up to 12 or 14 stitches on a long needle. Right. And sometimes you need a little bit extra purchase yeah. to push it through. Yeah. So that's sorry. Yes, that's what those are. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. So the the fabric that you use for sashko needs to have an open weave. If it's too thick, 
um, it's difficult to have nice even stitches, likewise if the fabric is too thin. The fabric that I use for my sashko is the traditional Kofu Sumuji in indigo blue, which is the one at the top of the picture. The only problem with this fabric is it frays. So I either use a little fray check, which is um, a, a fabric glue along the edge, or for larger pieces, I use a little bit of zigzag um, to prevent it fraying or, or stretching. Traditional Japanese fabrics, which those ones are on your screen at the moment, are only 14 inches wide. Um, and the reason for this is this is the, the size of fabric that they use for their kimonos. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Yes. I also use another fabric for Sashko that is very similar to the Kofu Sumuji, which is also made in Japan, um, but is 44 inches wide and it's not quite so expensive. Um, so like traditional fabric, it also frays a little bit and it's a bit of a nuisance. Of course, there's lots of other cotton prints uh, with Japanese designs and seams. And on the next slide, um, you can see panels that can be used when we're designing um, your, your quilts. You may want to use a panel and, and do some sash go round about it or, or maybe fussy cut some nice um, other fabrics just to make up your own designs. Mm -hmm. The next slide. Yes. There's also a variety of different ways to mark the Sashko design onto your fabric. The two I like to use are the Clover white marking pen, which is on the top left hand side of your screen. Um, it's a roller ball and it makes a fine clear white line which takes a few seconds to appear but can be easily removed with a light iron on the back of the stitching or with a burst of steam. The second is charcoal paper. It's not dressmaker's carbon but it's very similar and it's a Japanese version which again is easy to remove from your work. This is great for transferring motives, motifs onto fabric but it does have a tendency to rub off when stitching if the pattern is large with a lot of dense stitching and you're moving across it. So I like to go over some of the lines with the white marking pen, just to make sure it's still there by the end of my project. And on the right hand side, yes, that is a piece of sandpaper that you see. <laughs> I like to use a very fine sandpaper um, to hold my piece of fabric steady when I'm marking, because there's nothing worse than marking up and then you find that you've moved slightly and you've got an odd looking um, design. And also there's a pink thingy there. I bought that at um, a show at Ingolston at, um, a few years ago. And that is exactly what it was described as from the, the, the seller was a pink thingy. And I thought, oh, that'll be good for putting, when I'm sewing on my machine for pushing my material through near the needle so I don't get my fingers caught. But when I got it home, I noticed right on the end is a tiny little ball. And then I re-looked at it and thought that looks like a quill. And that is actually for marking your, your, um, fab, your designs onto, when you're transferring them onto your fabric. Nice. Great. But if you don't have a pink thingy, mm -hmm. an empty ballpoint pen works just as well. Great. Um, next slide. Mm -hmm. There's also lots of fabrics with pre-printed sashko patterns, and there are a, quite a variety of them on sale. The only problem with these is you're restricted to those patterns, the size that they come in, and the colours that they're available in. If you're just starting out or want to do something quickly, these are fine. And some are actually marked up with a stitch size, as you could see in the right hand sample. Mm -hmm. The only thing with those ones is they don't tell you what order to stitch in. But they are useful. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And just as with embroidery, designs or patterns can be found online or copied from books. Here are some of the books that I use. 
Um, a good book will also tell you which part of the pattern to stitch first. Um, it it's, uh, tends to go left to right or right to left or up and down and that you just work your way across a pattern in one way. But when I'm starting off, I, next slide, sorry, next slide. Mm -hmm. I um, like to take a photocopy of that page and then I mark up the direction of the stitching and which lines should be sewn first. Um, yeah, you can see I've, um, I've used Google Translate on that one because it's a Japanese design. <laughs> Um, so there are three different types of patterns that, that are used traditionally in Sashko. So next slide. Yes. The first ones are motifs. Motifs are flowers or leaves that maybe give your work a seasonal flavor or a particular theme or they could be family crests. Although these look easy um, and they are always very nice to do, they're probably the last type of sashko that you should try when starting out. This is because you need to practice the stitch, stitch size. You're marking these ones on your own, so you don't, you have to, to do your own stitch sizing. Um, and you have to have an idea how you're going to stitch it and which order you're going to stitch it in. Mm -hmm. This one is a, a traditional motif called a noshi, which is just really um, fabrics or, or um, I think it's wheats actually yeah. that are tied together with rope. Yeah. Next slide. So the second type of um, sashko patterns are pattern sashko, which have curved or straight lines which change direction to make the larger pattern. These ones are stitched on a grid, but the horizontal and vertical lines can be of different widths. The stitches in between um, on the grid are counted in the short pattern, so each line should have the same amount of stitching on it. Maybe we'll skip over quick, just in case there's... <laughs> Anyway, but you can also see that, that this pattern is actually um, a sea urchin pattern mm. and that the centre circle is the size of a five pence piece. Yeah, lovely. So there are a lot of stitches in a very small area. Mm. Uh, next slide. Mm. The last type is one stitch sashko. Um, and these are designs worked as a grid on straight lines only, where the, the stitches meet or cross to make the design. Usually the horizontal and vertical lines are the same width. Um, and both of those examples are done on a quarter inch grid. And starting out, these are typically the first type of stitch that you would start with. It gives a nice, easy structure to work with uh, and you know where your stitches are going to be, be positioned. In each of those categories, there are hundreds of patterns which have been used for hundreds of years, each having a story to tell. Also, today's designers are creating more modern patterns to add to this extensive collection, some of which I'll show you later in the quilts. Um, I'm going to try and do a little demo now. Okay. Um, if I can get my camera yes. set up better. I'll just go and have a look, see if everybody's, everyone enjoying it so far? It's great, isn't it? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. There are lots of, lots of thumbs up, Lorraine, nods. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Good, good. Lots of thumbs up, yes. Okay. Very interesting. I'm going to show you one of the easiest patterns to do. Yes. It's a, a traditional Japanese tortoise shell motif. Um, which really only takes on its final appearance when the single thread stitches are placed at the centre of each hexagon. Um, it also incorporates some needle threading to create some of this design. Mm -hmm. So when you're starting, you start with your grid. Now, like Blue Peter, here's one I've done a little earlier because there's nothing more boring than sat watching someone drawing a quarter inch grid. <laughs> but you can, it does take a little while. 
but yes. uh, that's it done. So that's stage one. It's done. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> then stage two, which I've started, it's really easy because what you're doing is stitching on the grid lines. Hopefully you mm -hmm. can see that. Yes. Uh, yes? Yes, yeah. Um, now, when you start stitching, I prefer to use just a traditional quilter's knot, which is on the back there. Um, sorry, it's a bit back to front because I'm not looking at it differently here. I know, it's very, um, very difficult. It's like reversing with the trailer on, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so but this is the this is one way of starting. If you're using um, or you do so if I'm sorry, if you're doing a design where you're seeing both the front and the back of the design, you wouldn't use that kind of knot. Mm -hmm. You would use one where you're stitching along, very similar to embroidery, where you're catching the, the stitches underneath the first little line. Yeah. Also, using a knot. Um, is, is actually um, a way that most of the, the quilting done on, on old jackets and old, fa old fabrics would be done because you've got to remember that it's, it's got to be hard wearing so mm -hmm. if it was just caught underneath the threads it could pull out. Yeah. You can also see on the back of here as we turn a corner we leave a loop and that loop is just to help keep the threads so they don't bunch up and they don't tie it, they don't get too tight. Mm -hmm. So when you're stitching, you're starting, you just, on this one, it's to say it's very easy because you are just doing it on the lines. And what you're doing is pushing the fabric onto the needle mm -hmm. rather than putting the needle into the, the material. Mm -hmm. You're just pleating it on. Now, this one, you know that you're actually doing uh, on a grid, so you know the stitches are going to be the right length. But also using a big needle, if you were just doing your own size stitching, you could just pull it through a little bit and then you can see that the stitches are of a nice even length. Yeah. And we always finish a stitch by pulling through to the back. Mm -hmm. I'm using double thread here, as I said, and um, when I'm pulling it through, just leaving a little loop at the end. And I try to keep um, my stitches flat so that both of the little loops are, are flat down so they're nice and neat. So they're not, not one's not twisted and one's not over the top. Mm -hmm. So on this design, we're just going back and forward, go to one end, and loop back and, and go down all the way forward. Once we have completed all of our stitches on the grid, we could then think about weaving the little pattern. Um, well, I should actually have said actually back on this other one, unlike um, hand quilting, we don't need to use a hoop, even on the larger pieces, because we don't start from the center of a pattern, we always start from the edges. Uh -huh. um, and also, unlike hand quilting, where you start with the needle on the top of your fabric. In Sashko, you always start with the needle from the back of your fabric mm -hmm. up to the front. Mm -hmm. We always do lots of stitches at the same time because it gives you a nice even um, look to it. Yeah. Um, unlike um, if you were just doing one stitch at a time, it would start to look quite lumpy. Yeah. Yeah. So on this one, we're going to start doing the weaving pattern. And again, it's, it's really very simple you just catch your thread there and down and you pull it through gently you see that mm -hmm. okay. it's um two things to watch out for here always make sure you have enough thread to strand across mm -hmm. the line you're about to start because you can't join your thread on the front because otherwise you'd end with a, with a big knot which would be quite quite um, horrible yeah. um, and also always do the threading with the eye of the needle going first because you don't want to um, end up splitting your thread or, or your stitches underneath um, and you, you're also trying to keep your, your thread 
nice and flat as you're going through. Well, on this one, I've done the other done my theory. sorry. Sorry, I, I see what you mean. You mean thread when you're threading it through the other loops? Yes. With the, with the wrong end. Yeah. The yeah. wrong end. Use yes. Use the eye of the the needle, not the pointy end, uh -huh. just in case you catch the the threads. Yeah. Um. I'm using uh, on this one. I've used a variegated thread, uh -huh. and I'm using single strand thread to do my weaving. Mm -hmm. okay. The last part of this one is where you're going to start making the honeycomb or the, the tortoise shell within the honeycomb. Um, and again, it's just very simple. You're catching your, I'm using a single strand thread here again because it just makes it look nicer. Um, and on this one, I've actually used pearl cotton for the strand, for the weaving. Mm -hmm rather than sashko thread. It has a slight sheen to it and it makes it nice and glossy looking. Mm -hmm. So again, we're just putting lots of thread, lots of um, stitches onto the needle and then pulling it through. Um, again, on the back here, you can see all the loops at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and in the middle here, there's little knots that have joined the two two strands of thread together. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've run out of thread, and it's just very similar to a weaver's knot, mm -hmm. um, um, and it's quite it keeps it quite tight, and it's 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 quite nice. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the one I've prepared earlier, mm -hmm. once it's all finished, uh, like that. Um, and these are nice little pieces to do for we'll be doing a greetings card so i've got some of these cards and i pop them in and lovely card mm -hmm. so very nice anyway as i said earlier i actually started an eight month course along with another eight ladies and one gentleman with susan briscoe and um, the course took us um no, I'm going to try and readjust my camera. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a wee question for you first, though. What oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Louise, Louise Whittle's asked, what weight of pearl thread do you use? 16. 16, yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. I need to maybe move that back just a little bit. A wee bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah, as I say, I started this, um, this course with eight ladies and a one gentleman with Susan Briscoe. And the course took us right back to basics, how to create and stitch patterns. Learning in this way meant we could adapt any pattern uh, and create it in any size that we wanted. So once a month, we would meet and learn about a particular topic. And then obviously we had homework that to keep us busy until the next time we met. Can we have the next slide? Yes, sure. Thank you. So before stitching on the mate material, I first, I found that firstly drawing the pattern and marking out the sequence on graph paper helped me get my eye in. It's so easy to be happily stitching away only to find that you are one square out and you've got to unpick it all. Mm. Um, so, but, and as I said, not the, the not so exciting part was drawing the grid, but this is the most important task yeah. because uh, so in particularly in one stitch patterns, because if the grid isn't correct, the pattern will not come out correctly. During the, the course, I made around 35 different samples, building on the different techniques and ranged from five and four and a half inch squares to four and a half by nine inch rectangles. And then it was up to each person which ones they wanted to use in their sampler or wall hanging. On the next slide. Mm -hmm. I chose a, a selection made up from all three types of sashko patterns into my sampler. Um, and you can imagine my delight. So sorry, you can see there's um, some patterned one, that's the one we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. There's um, the other, that other one we saw earlier, the, the noshi. There's some other, there's a fan there with a, a plaited tail on it. And down the bottom, there's quite a lot of one, stitch patterns yeah lovely yeah 
Um, so you can imagine my delight when Susan Briscoe chose my sampler along with the others from the class to display on her stand at the quilt show in Prague that she was uh, invited to attend. Okay. I was even more delighted. Um, so the next slide. Yes. When she asked if she could take my quilt to Japan mm -hmm. along with the other three <laughs> as part of an exhibition that was being held in Yagamata City and the Tokyo Museum of Modern Art by the Yuza Sashko Guild. That quilt is almost better travelled than me. Ah. <laughs> and here you can see Susan standing in front of the four quilts yeah. uh, from her Edinburgh class at the Japanese exhibition. That's great. Next slide. Mm -hmm. My next project was inspired by a quilt that Susan had done some years before, which used a selection of um, Sashko crests, motifs and flowers combined with pieced blocks. The, this is um, a close-up of three of the blocks that I chose for my design. Um, that one in the middle we're looking at just now is um, a three plum blossom mm -hmm. with little French knots on each end. Um, the one on the left hand side is the Japanese orange blossom. Mm -hmm. up, there. Uh, up there somewhere. That's it, mm -hmm. that's Japanese orange blossom. And the other one is um, a, a, a quite a popular design called a treasure bag. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so the next slide. I didn't stick to her layout, um, but I did use a combination of Japanese inspired patchwork blocks and Sashko designs that I liked. Um, and instead of putting striped material to board on the, around the border to frame the work, I chose the same material I had used for the main color in my quilt. And there I decided to draw some flower seed heads as additional Sashko designs. So you can see one there on the right hand side at the top, um, mm -hmm. which was inspired by duvet cover that is on my bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that one. Um, and as I say, you can see a variety of stuff. Now that one is Mount Fuji yep. in the middle there, a nice small easy one to do, um, a fan and, and as I say, some of the other such good design, the one coming up in the middle there is, are, is representing waves. Mm -hmm. um, and some, the one on the, the, the left hand side is um, like a windmill or fan. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, windmill or, or arrowheads, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, a wheel and a crane. Yeah. Um, okay. And then at the bottom is some pine, pine needles. Mm -hmm. Just because I wanted some uh, flowery things on the outsides. Mm -hmm. um, so just to make sure that the, the little dandelion was another one there that I, I'd, I'd done for yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next slide. Mm -hmm. So again, just to make sure these designs were suitable for Sashko work, um, I drew them out before I started. Yeah. Um, just to make sure, as I say, that they, they actually look okay and that you could stitch them and they did look as if they were reasonable Sashko work. Mm -hmm. The quilt um, is 55 by 65 inches and it took me almost a year to complete that one. Wow. Um, that you did. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. All of the, the Japanese pieced blocks have names and different meanings. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from this pattern that is in, on the bottom is from the Japanese book, it has a Japanese name with a cross, it looks like a cross in the center of it. And just above is a similar type pattern from a Western quilting block, uh, quilting book, which is a similar type block. Mm -hmm. So there, there's not that much difference between some of the, the different patterns. No. Next slide. The individual blocks, all 35 of them, um, 
were machine pieced together and I machine quilted in the ditch. Now that means I'm just stitching along the seam line um, to stabilize all of the blocks. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do, put too much quilting on the top because it was fancy enough on the top. I thought there was enough going on. Mm -hmm. So I quilted, hand quilted in both coordinating and contrasting quilting thread, a Japanese grasses motif, which you can see there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And on the back, just to give it a little more interest and to break up that huge expanse of backing material, I added another insert of Sashko across the middle. Lovely. In April of last year, just after the start of the first lockdown, while I was surfing, surfing the web, I came across a picture of a lovely Sashko quilt, a bit more modern in design, using themed Sashko patterns, and the theme was water and nature. These were designs were somewhat different to anything I'd seen before. And after a lot of searching, I still couldn't find the patterns. I eventually found an email address on one of the websites and wrote asking if they knew where I could find the pattern. Well, I was surprised when I got a reply back from a lady who had actually designed the patterns and she was in Australia. Ah. Um, she said that she wasn't going to publish the patterns, but there was a group in France who was about to start a block of the month project using those designs. For those of you who don't know what a block of the month is, it is where um, you join up with a, another group of people and the pattern is sent out uh, for either a block or a section of a quilt once a month or over a set period of time. In this case, it was nine months. I actually got in touch with the French group and as they were just starting the project, I was able to join in. So every month I would get the pattern sent to me along with other instructions, thankfully in English, because I don't do much French. Um, they had also set up a private Facebook page where we could ask questions and share the pictures of our completed blocks. Mm -hmm. um, next slide. Yeah. And here are a couple of the individual blocks. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see that the, the blocks combine some sashko here as well as some piecing and applique and the the next block which is the next slide oh sorry you want to go and have a look have a look at that lovely the next one mm -hmm. this next one um the sashko represents um rice bundles mm -hmm. Uh, on the big one and the small one is a chrysanthemum on water but you can also see here it's also incorporating small scraps of um, striped fabric to me make up the the blocks just as I was saying earlier that um, a, a traditional Japanese quilt would incorporate lots of different pieces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I soon discovered that although the majority of the people were that were taking part were French, there were also ladies from Spain, Germany, the Netherlands, as well as the UK. And it was so easy to understand what was being said because Google Translate is such a wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Once the quilt top was completed, I added a few small borrow pieces, which were thankfully more successful than my first attempt. Mm -hmm. You may be able to see that the smaller pieces of fabric, as you're putting them over the top of the larger pieces, the stitches catch the edges, mm -hmm. and that's to help stop the, the fabric spraying. Mm -hmm. um, I added dragonflies to the borders uh, in Sashko as well. And then next slide. It was then layered up and hand quilted in the ditch, again, which is along the, the seam lines. And you can maybe see there the mm. small navy blue stitches, which are the hand stitching, with a fine sashko thread. Um, and I've done that along with some simple circles in the borders to stabilize the whole quilt. And then the next slide, you'll see that I managed to find some Japanese fabric with small dragonflies for the backing. Great. And that helped me tie in the front dragonflies with yeah. the back. Um, and just to make it feel for me a whole complete quilt. 
But Sashko isn't confined to quilts. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, you're still looking. I'm still looking. It's so, it's so lovely. We can't just go <laughs> rush back. <laughs> I guess I've seen it so often yeah, I just yeah, skim yeah. over it. <laughs> I, I, I sent that I sent a picture of this quilt to my husband and said, look at this, look at this. <laughs> He's like, how much is it? <laughs> uh, as I said, um, Sashko isn't confined to, to just doing quilts. It's the same as any other um, needlework technique. Um, and I've made a number of other items, including this table runner. Mm. Um, on the table runner, I drew out that pattern on paper and then got my colouring pencils out and coloured it with green and tan to help me identify how I was going to run the stitches up through the, the, the circles. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Some of those um, circles are much nicer than others because um, you can maybe just see on the, on the one coming up on the left hand side of the screen, the white one, you can see it's got a nice empty centre to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's how they're meant to look. Um, some of them aren't quite as neat as that one. So, next slide. I've also created some Sashko pictures. You don't have to be good at artwork or drawing to do this type. Um, I'm not, but I do like to, when I'm doing something new and different, I do like to put it on paper first to see if it's going to work. On this one, I made the little fabric kimono. Mm -hmm. um, in similar origami style. And then I just drew such simple circles to enclose it. And I thought it looked fine on paper. On the other one that's on the same page there, um, I found a clip art of, ooh, we're upside down on that one, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, I found some um, clip art of some little geisha shoes. Um, and I tried to, to work out some, um, fabrics to look at see how we can see the shading etc um and again i just worked around what kind of pattern i would use but hope oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was my practice one that's great so on the next slide you'll hopefully see the completed items let's have a wee look at the at that. the wee shoe lovely they were all the pieces were actually bonda webbed on oh yeah um, and when I spoke to Susan Briscoe about how I was going to sew that, she suggested that I didn't actually sew them on, that I just used the bonder web mm -hmm. and put the piece behind glass to keep it from, from moving. Yeah. Because otherwise we would end up with quite lumpy bits around the, the edges. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and that was the two completed items. Lovely. Um, I also have lots of good fun scouring the charity shops when they were open for mm -hmm. the frames. Yes. Um, again, I seem to have accumulated a large number that are stacking up in a cupboard in the garage. <laughs> My husband hasn't found them yet, so I'm okay. <laughs> so, yeah. They're really lovely, yeah. Mm, very nice. Yeah. So the next slide. Yeah. This one was this Christmas tree was a pre-printed panel I picked up online just before Christmas. I thought it was nice. It looked open and flowing, but mm -hmm. gave it a, an idea of still an idea of Christmas. And it was just as well I made it as that ended up being the only Christmas tree on display in the house last year, mm -hmm. since Fabulous family celebrations were all curtailed. Mm -hmm. On the next slide, mm -hmm. there's always small pieces of fabric left over from the projects. Um, and as I was showing you earlier, uh, one of the things I like to do is to make little greetings cards to spend, send to special friends. Um, they're, they're easy to do, they're a nice way of practicing new patterns as well mm -hmm. as when I'm, uh, when I'm doing that. If they turn out all right, they go into a greetings card. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the next slide, my um, latest madcap idea was to buy a book in Japanese. <laughs> um, no, I don't speak, read or even understand Japanese, but my theory is that I should be able to follow the patterns in the book. 
mm -hmm. using the pictures only. And with a little help from Google Translate, it actually works okay. As you can see there, I've been trying out a couple of them and um, they're not too bad, they're, they're, they're getting there. Yeah, they're lovely. lovely. Um, and next slide. Mm -hmm. I always have lots of ideas swimming about in my head. Oh, can you turn that one round again, please? This one? That one, yes, uh -huh. thank you, I'm sorry. I've... That's all right, like that? That, yeah, perfect. Yep. Um, as I say, I have them always have things going around in my head as to what I'm going to do next. And I thought I'd like to do something with teapots. Mm -hmm. And I found this book, this embroidery book, all about tea time embroidery. And I was surprised to see the picture of the teapot, which is the one you see on the right hand side, has the pattern called rising steam ah. on the teapot. And the, as I said, the bottom of the screen there, you can see the um, the actual pattern from the, the Sashko book, Rising Steam. So I thought, that's perfect. So uh, that's something I'm going to be doing in the future. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So next slide. So sewing by hand rather than machine is on the rise. And we've seen a huge surge in Sashko stitching and hand quilting in recent months as we rediscover the soothing power of ditching our machines in favour of a needle and thread. So just make some time for yourself each day. Sit comfortably, breathe slowly. Select fabrics that are easy to sew and have some contrast in colour, tone, fabric. Um, and most of all, fabrics that make you happy. It's all about the process. It's not about the destination. Mm. Arigato. Thank you. Very good. That's great. That's great, Lorraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm going to I'm going to ask everyone to uh, unmute, um, so that we can we can have some questions. I'm sure you've got lots of questions. I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we shall we just when everyone's unmuted, we'll just say thank you very much, Lorraine. Well done. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, well done. Well done. Was it Arigato you said? Arigato. Yeah. That's thank you. Yeah. Arigato. Yeah, you. It's the only word I know. Because Lorraine's on, on an iPad, uh, we're going to I'm going to be quite strict and say if you want to ask a question, uh, can you please put your hand up uh, on the on screen? And I'll find you, and then, and then, um, and then, so Lorraine can see you when you're asking the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, has anybody, got, has anybody got a question they'd like to, they'd like to ask? Mm -hmm. Jennifer Johns. Jennifer. Jennifer, hang on a sec. Uh, can you put your hand up. Can you do the on your reactions? Can you put your hand up? Because that brings you to the to the front of the screen. It just makes my life an awful lot easier. Um, if you can do that, then that's great. But I don't think she can, Polly. Can, that's fine. Yes. Jennifer, wave at me, like manually wave at me, so I can find you. Ah, there you go. I see you now. I see you now. I'm going to ask you to unmute, um, Jennifer. Thank you. That's it, I think. I'd like to, I've started to do a small sampler, and I don't know, I'm not sure how to finish it off, but I come to the end of my thread. I feel sometimes it says to do a stitch over the top of another stitch, but I find that quite untidy sometimes or too thick. And then I've tried to sort of link it off at the back and I still think it's quite untidy. The, the, the way I do it is um, using a quilter's knot on the back, just a, another right. small knot. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I've got on this one, you can see there's a quilter's knot on the bottom here. Where I started and there's yes. another one at the top um oh. just leave them out a little bit and trim them back uh-huh so it's inside your fabric uh -huh. yeah. well this is my one that I've just sort of started I don't know if you can see it yeah yeah mm -hmm. and that so that's the glasses motif yes but I'll yes. admit I was halfway uh, halfway along it when I realized that oh when you when you dampen the material, the pattern disappears, oh. and then I realised that I hadn't been doing the wee bit at the bottom. 
So I've started to do that, but when once I've finished it, I'll have to go back and do, do the ones that I've missed. No, I, I'm getting there, but I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I thoroughly enjoyed your, your speech. Thank you. I mean, that's part of it. It's just so long as you enjoy what you're doing. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lovely. Well done, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, I think uh, Rina has a has a question. Let me see. Uh -huh. Rina, uh, hello, Rina. Thank you very much for putting Hi. up. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I ask, do you back it with any interfacing or anything afterwards? Um, if you're not making a quilt, say you were making like a cushion, would you put I am not an interfacing on the back of it? Um, I don't. No. Um, I would just put that as part, that would be fine as it is, but you could you could do that, I guess. Uh -huh. um, but I, I, I've never needed, never found the need to, to, to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends how um, firm you want it to be. Uh huh. Yeah. I just wondered whether it was needed or not. That was all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, does anyone else have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I, I would um, like to know what how long it takes to make them, Lorraine. Oh, it well, it, it, it depends. It depends on the the um, the complexity of the pattern. I mean, doing something simple like this, little four and a half inch square, it takes about an hour. Well, I, but some of the bigger ones with lots of um, different maybe stranding over the back, etc. Of the, the patterns, um, could take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. For a whole quilt, um, because I, I, I drew out all of those um, patterns myself on the big red quilt, um, I drew them all at first and I I'd actually played around with them. Um, it did take me, as I say, almost a year to complete the whole quilt. Mm -hmm. uh, I maybe done other things in between time just to give myself a break, but uh, yeah. it's, it's not, this for me isn't a, a, a technique that you, you rush. It's, yeah. it's, it's for relaxing. Yeah, it's kind of meditative, uh, you think? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's for mindfulness, you know, just, yeah. Yeah, lovely. lovely. Uh, I've got a question from Jennifer now. Jennifer Miller, hello, Jennifer. Hello. Jen, hello. <laughs> that was really nice. Um, I just wondered, do you draw your pattern freehand or do you have stencils or what do you do? Um, for the motifs, I often have... Um, a pattern that I've taken from a book or I've seen something else. However, I did actually in the, the red quilt, I drew freehand those um, seed heads yeah. and the, um, the dandelions. That was my first attempt at freehand drawing. Yeah. Um, I'm not an artist. I don't ever pretend to be an artist, um, but there is a book that I have and I think it has over 400 different um, patterns but they're all very small, so you've got to um, scale them up on the on the computer first. Yeah. Um, and then, mm -hmm. then you trace them. Mm -hmm. Trace them, right. And do you yeah, use a special them. pen to put it onto the material? Um, the white, the white. When I'm tracing them, I'm using charcoal paper. Mm -hmm. It's a Japanese um, like dressmaker's carbon, but it's slightly different. Um, and then you just use the um, an old ballpoint pen, an empty one, to, to go over the top. Oh, yes, yeah, she did say that, yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Great. Pauline, Penny Towel has a question. Penny. Penny? Right, okay, thanks, Penny. I'll come come to you. Maz, Have a good wife, Maz, Penny. Maz is brilliant. She's uh, my, my wing. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, let's see. Have you found me? She's, she's quite far along, Pauline. Well, well, I can see you. You're, I'll be at the end of the list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My my question is, I'm very interested to hear that you got a book in Japanese, and you had all your had all your patterns which you use. How on earth do you search for a book in Japanese? <laughs> because presumably you can't just find it on Amazon. Like, <laughs> yes, you can. Oh. <laughs> Um, also, um, as I say, Susan Briscoe, who's yeah. my, my, my tutor, um, has a website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she has actually just last week put five new Jap books in Japanese up on her website. Oh. So if you want to get a Japanese book, 
Yeah. yeah, she has them. Huh? But you can get them on Amazon too. Yeah. yeah. So there's, a great, there's a great shop in London as well called the Japan Centre. Oh, do you think that counts as essential travel? I think so, yeah. I think <laughs> 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 it counts as education, doesn't it? <laughs> and and well being. <laughs> Thanks, Penny. That's great. Thank you. Um, now, any more questions? Oh, Sharon, I'm going to come to you. Hello, Sharon. It's not a question. It's just to say thank you, and you've inspired me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to try have a go at it. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> thank excellent. you ever so much. It was excellent. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sharon. That's great. And and it, and it, the the thing that I I like as well as 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 the actual aesthetics of of what you can create, Lorraine, is the fact that it's quite a simple. Um, you don't have to have too many bits and bobs to to actually no. start. So. So it's quite quite nice because people can start it slowly and 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 then get into it, you know. Yeah, and uh, likewise, if you don't like it, then you don't have an awful lot of outlay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 Has, that, has yeah. anyone has anyone else on our on our, um, our attendees? Has anyone tried? Has yeah, tried? I have polling. Oh, you have. Yeah, yeah. 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 and me. Yes. And me. Is that and, yep. and me. Oh, yep. oh, <laughs> I've done I've done Susan's course as well. Who's who's oh, that speaking? Who's that speaking? Uh, oh, Joyce Petrie. No, I've I've got the book. <laughs> Where are you, Joyce? Wave at me. Wave at Joyce me. is quite far along again. She was quite close to Penny. Penny Penny wasn't far along on my screen though. All right, Joyce, Joyce what, wave your hands about the polling. Joyce, I can see you, Joyce, yes. Hang on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Looks like you're taking off. <laughs> Might be an idea. No, I, I have to say, Lorraine, it was great to see it. And I've, I've seen your quilt. I did um, Susan's course the following year and, um, and thoroughly enjoyed it as well. I would recommend it to anybody. I, I don't think she's doing them now. I think that... No place that she was doing them in Edinburgh is not there anymore but That's she right. was looking to hope to start them um, again um, at a later date and but I thoroughly enjoyed it and, and have since then I've been doing Kogen which is one of the other Japanese yeah. stitches um, which is, is quite good and I'll, I'll show you um, my eyesight isn't that I, good to be I did able a, to do it. <laughs> I did a Christmas tree as well. Wow. Um, it's in the Kogan stitching, which I, I find is even more relaxing because it's it's actually even simpler than the the sashiko. But I thoroughly enjoyed it and your quilts are amazing, Lorraine. Oh, they are. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Joyce. Thank you. Um Anne, you've you've got a question, Anne Fiddis, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, yep. not not a question really. Just to say, I do have the book. Got the book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. have, have you used it? <laughs> no, no. Yes, I have. I've even got the, I've even got the patterns um, uh, copied out <laughs> uh, inside. So uh, yeah. you know, they're all, they're all done. <laughs> uh, so I have done some. I did some with City and Guilds as well years and years ago. Um, but beautiful quilts. Yes, thank you so much. It's uh, you're very inspirational. <laughs> so, yeah, very thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. So. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Um, Sandra, I think Sandra's got a question. Hello, Sandra. Yeah. I'm, I belong to Carrick Quilters in Presswich, and quite a number of our ladies went to uh, Susan Briscoe's course up in the north of Glasgow. Mm hmm uh, and they just loved it. And some of the work was really uh, super. It inspired me. And I got some packs and did some Dorothy bags oh, yeah. for, for my girls. And I was always going to do something more, but never get around to it. But I've got the book as well. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get back to it. I've got so many other hobbies that I never seem to get time. 
<laughs> but I did enjoy it. And I love, like yourself, I love hand quilting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, so <laughs> in quilting. But your work is beautiful. And, and it is, as the girls, it's inspiring. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Glenda. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, now, have we got any more, any more questions, folks? Okay, I've got I've got a question. Can everyone who has this is their first SWI uh, Zoom session, a, a Skillshare session? Could you put your hands up for me? Because I see quite a few new faces. Oh, hi Fiona. Hello Fiona. Uh, great. Yeah, keep your hands up for me. Oh, yes, yeah, quite a few. Quite a few. Thank you very much. Um, so this um, this will be being put up onto YouTube, and that YouTube's where we put all of our um, expert talks, expert um, talks, and Skillshare sessions. Uh, there, I've still got a few um, that we've done in the past couple of weeks that haven't been up yet, got gone up yet. It just take a wee, wee while to put up, um, but we'll I'll make sure that this one goes up sharpish, as sharpish mm -hmm. as I can. Um, so you'll find that you'll, you'll find all of the previous ones at uh, Scottish Women's Institutes TV on YouTube, and um, you can you can watch whatever you like. We do have a a, a slightly spectacular session as a set of uh, um, if you're a knitter, um, we've got the uh, learn learn how to do sanker knitting. So a lot of the ones on here tonight are, are actually midway through. Uh, hellish times knitting, <laughs> knitting <laughs> but hellish but rewarding as well I think, I think I would say um, but they made these amazing uh, Sankar gloves um, lots of different patterns um, we've been finding out about the history and things like that so you might be interested in that too but um, Lorraine that, that, that was a wonderful session really oh, well done yeah. <laughs> it was. and Thank you very much for sharing your your quilts and your and all the history and everything. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So yeah. thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening, everyone. And uh, and thank you. Thank you. we have we have uh, tomorrow at two. Um, we, we we always get together on Fridays at two, so come and join us if you fa if you fancy just popping in for a, um, I think it's craft and chat tomorrow. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, Matt's always here. Yeah. yeah. So we just we just have a chat, and you can you be knitting or sewing, or just yeah. having a cup of tea. Yeah, you just bring, bring whatever you're working on. If you're not working on anything, don't worry. You can just come for a chat too. And we it's very relaxed. We do, there's there's about 30, 40 people on, and we all just shoot the breeze. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.